You'll constantly hear comedians and commentators mock everyone gets a trophy in younger grade competitions. It sounds ludicrous and is an easy target, but none actively question the underlying causes of its practice. They basically just pass it off as this generation being weak and they were tough and badass as kids, not these super liberal whiny babies we're raising. They don't realize their common sense, self-believing, gritty mindset actually caused the problem. Around the turn of the century, German immigrants came over to America, bringing with them socialism, progressivism, and liberal values. One such value being that a strong mind required a strong body. At the same time, Kellogg, Graham, and Post, who were members of a radical religious subgroup, were trying to figure out how to rid the nation of the scourge of masturbation. On top of eating unstimulating bland grain cereals and crackers, along with encouraging circumcision, they also promoted exercise to tire you out and take your mind off of the horrible temptation to spank it. Teddy Roosevelt had found exercise and rough living to have changed him from a sickly, wimpy city boy to a manly man and preached that building the body and living in nature would make a man out of you, sadly also being one of the first American presidents to be actively anti-gay. Sports became something that everyone could get behind and agree on regardless of politics. There were some in academia and the pulpit who despised sports, but for the most part the agreement was that sports were a positive thing. Sports had been used as a way to reduce dueling at universities among young southern aristocrats. It was banned and then reinstated in many universities over the years, but by mid-century sports were as American as mom, apple pie, and of course, baseball. It was the shared experience that brought people of all different types and backgrounds together, made us all feel like the American ideal. It didn't matter what religion or political party you were part of. Just ignore, of course, that the major leagues were all white and female sports had existed post-Civil War and during World War II were killed off. Otherwise, sports represented the highest and noblest ideals of America. Then communism came in, the Red Scare. Fear of communism ramped up capitalist sentiment. Competition became dogma. We began seeing our sports as a form of soft power. It became a central pillar of every school. It became a religion. Reaganomics came in the 80s, and well-paid education systems began taking cut after cut after cut. Schools and colleges began using sports to keep themselves afloat. Over time, in some areas, academics took a backseat to sports, and now in over half the states, the highest paid person at a college in that state is a coach, not an actual academic. Schools got a lot of money from ticket sales, the better their teams and players were, so things like waivers for poor behavior or poor grades were given to keep money flowing to help them survive. Sports players were given privileged status, especially in small towns, getting away with things the average person would get locked up for. Sports scholarships brought academically inferior students into colleges, leaving out people with actual academic aptitudes. Sports stadiums began demanding and getting better and better stadiums built for them anytime they wanted at the taxpayer's expense, while they raked in all the profit. Sports became viewed as the only way out of poverty for many communities, to the point that colleges were able to financially abuse their players, often insufficiently fed, in the name of academics, while making a boatload off of their likenesses years after they graduated, and marketing deals that the players never saw a cent off of, even if they never went to sports after college and had to deal with the physical damage the intense sport had put on their bodies for the rest of their lives. The 90s started seeing this all coming to a breaking point. Non-sports students began showing serious signs of lowered morale and self-esteem. If they didn't have the interest, physical genetics, or willing to pump steroids, they were nerds and losers who would never have the same respect and admiration of a jock. Winning in sports, specifically the right sport in your region, was sacred. Competition was all. Losers whine about their best, winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Teenagerhood is already awkward. Add the extra pressure and hormone overload, and you are bound to end up with some serious self-esteem issues. In other countries, sports and schools do exist, but they're clubs, not teams. Every club gets a budget, and treated with much more equal respect, be it academics, astronomy, science, debate, or sports. Teens are taught teamwork over just winning. Of course, parents and psychologists started getting worried, but they failed to see the root of the problem, and in an effort to boost their younger kids' self-esteem, began just celebrating everything in their life, mundane or exceptional, while sports remained the hallowed, untouchable area of godlike giants. 
Sadly, the long-term effects of this behavior of telling children they're special, above-average indigo snowflakes, instead of giving them a realistic view of reality and praising them for hard work and things they're very good at, had real lasting consequences. The millennial generation has been found to believe that they are more above average than any generation before them, which means they will be more susceptible to the Dunning-Kruger effect than their past generations. If you have been on the internet for any length of time, you will know it's true. While they may mostly be on the right side of the issues on average, such as social rights and hard science like climate change, and losing their religion at rapid numbers, millennials as they age will be even more sure of themselves and opposed to the next big science paradigm shift, similar to accepting climate change, unless bias countering is better understood. The reason why everyone gets a trophy is because the system and culture wasn't changed. When everything and everyone is celebrated, nothing becomes really special. They don't learn how to be gracious losers, and in some places, sports teams aren't taught to be gracious losers. It was a band-aid that failed to fix a bigger problem, but the bigger problem is in people's minds at a religious, untouchable level. And thanks to our terrible views on funding education, many schools would financially collapse if they dared to change their system to be more admiring of other skills, and actually encourage kids to pursue non-sports related activities. There is absolutely nothing wrong with sports. It can be a lot of fun, good exercise, teach how to be a team player, have self-control, and how to lose gracefully. But when it becomes a religion like it has become, just like any other religion or dogma, it can have very negative results. Until we can figure out how to restructure our schools and sports to have sports as an asset to education, as opposed to the end-all be-all of school for some people, kids will still keep getting participation trophies to try and boost their self-esteem to counter for their inability to live up to the godlike levels of being a high school sports star. Hey guys, just an update. I'm working a lot of overtime lately as we're really tight for money right now. I was going to start a new channel, but after working like mad to get the video done, I got to the end of the first video and there were some annoying technical glitches. And I started having designer's paranoia, thinking it wasn't good enough, mostly due to the limitations of my current tech. I moved the date up to late next month, as I barely have time to make more than two videos a month at this point. However, you could help fix that by donating to Patreon or going to my 3D printing shop. Both will help in giving me more time to get videos made if you feel like what I do is important. Also, watch more of my past videos of which I have over 400 as ad revenue helps in very, very tiny amounts here and there. Two, um, almost all of them are still relevant and a different perspective on life than you're probably used to hearing. Until next time, whenever I can drag myself to make another video, take care. I know I look like hell. I just woke up. Bye.